Kitten. Pretty yeah. good kid in there. Then Western's always good. It's, I mean, I don't like saying this because we're involved with it. I don't want it to sound <laughs> cocky or a certain way, but if you look at the top eight, which I'm looking at on your screen, those are a lot of the same teams that have been around. I mean, all the rankings, top 10, however many you rank, a lot of the same familiar faces that have been around the last five, six years at Team State for the 2A picture. Yeah, you got a couple of new ones, Delta and and uh, Hamilton Heights. Delta is going to be a good, solid team. Young um, Hamilton Heights returns a lot of guys. I think they return probably 11 or 12 wrestlers from last year's team, so they should be pretty solid. And you got Wallace C. Norwell has a pretty good team. I think they lost a few guys, but they have they're pretty solid. I, I think one A's or two A is going to be pretty pretty competitive this year, which. Uh, over the last, what, 10 years since they've had Team State, it really hasn't. It, most of the years, it's there's only been a couple of years where there have been really good duels in the finals, and most of the time, the teams are, it's interesting because the first probably, what, five or six years, um, Belmont or uh, Yorktown just dominated everyone, won by about 40 on average, and then Belmont won a couple of years, and it's been the last two years, you guys dominated, and then Belmont dominated, and so hopefully it's a good competitive match like every other match was the past couple of years. I, I talked to some of the coaches preseason, and that's one of the things we kind of like, you know, you never know what's going to happen by the time we get to January, but it might be the most parity in 2A that there's been in a long time. Um, you mentioned there's not many close duels in 2A um, in the finals. Unfortunately, we were a part of them, and we lost on the last match two <laughs> yeah, of those yeah, years. Yeah, yes. So I remember those being close, unfortunately, but – you're right. Every, I mean, 80% of the time, I feel like it's a blowout in the championship or it has been. And I don't necessarily think that'll be the case this year. Those are really good teams in the top 10. Um, as far as Norwell, they're one that I looked at their lineup because they, you know, they came to the Garrett invite last year, also known as the, you call it the Luke, Luke Field and invite. Yes. Um, not a memorial yet. He's still alive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> They they were really good last year, and then I looked at their lineup. Um, they lost the Johnson kid, who was obviously very good, but they're going to be so solid in the dual meet format this year. They could be sneaky good if they have everybody back and bring in some kids. Yeah, I think they could be a, a surprise. Yeah, they, we wrestled them last year, and they were they they weren't bad in any weight class. They're solid up and down. And obviously, you have a Johnson and some other pretty solid guys, some good real good guys. And then if you're solid top to bottom, that helps. And as long as our guys find the find a good spots in the lineup they could be they're, they're gonna be right in that mix seating's gonna be interesting to see um you'll see jay county at carroll correct uh typically yeah so Typ i yeah, assume so. that'll still happen yeah so you guys don't you guys were supposed to wrestle wall see last year right <laughs> uh kind of kind of <laughs> that was a we had something yeah. happen a little snafu with the schedule so we set up something with wall see and at the time that duel was going to happen i believe we had six kids out yeah, and uh, Coach Baumgartner's he didn't want to come over for that, which I totally get and I understand. <laughs> and I didn't know that we'd have many varsity on varsity matches that day. Yeah, so will you guys see anybody else? You won't see Belmont. You, you know, I assume you guys won't see anybody other than maybe a little bit of Wallace, a little bit of uh, Belmont at we'll Al see Smith. Some, yeah, some of these guys at the Al Smith. And you got New Prairie Heritage Hills, which you won't see. Your old, your old, your old uh, stomping grounds. So Yeah, they made state in football. It's pretty yes. cool. Yeah, so they're going to get a late start. Um, CP over Portage. Lots of CP guys not in the lineup. That's We'll, we'll, go, we'll go over that later. <laughs> but, yeah, so Delta is going to be pretty solid. It's going to be interesting um, to see who sees each other and if there's any kind of seeding changes uh, coming up. Um, Belmont and Norwell will, will wrestle. So Belmont will have a couple commons. Um, Jay County. Let's just see. We have schedules up here, don't we? Jay County will see uh, Adam Central. They'll see you guys. ECIC. Um, no one else there. What will Western have before? Um, they'll have Kokomo. I feel like Western might see Hamilton Heights before Team State. Yes. They will see them. Um, that's right there. Uh, next weekend, they'll see them at Kokomo next weekend, um, and then the Western Invite. That's usually a pretty solid. Um, you got Eastern, Wabash, Oak Hill. They'll see Oak Hill. Um, they'll see uh, Rochester. That should be a real good duel. You got number yeah. two, and number one. Um, 
that's going to be real good. And then they'll be at Al Smith. Too. Uh, so I guess I, I forgot they'll be at Al Smith too. So you might oh, see yeah. their guys there. Yep. They're new to Al Smith this year. So, um, and then Delta, who will they see beforehand? They will see, they dominated this past weekend. They had a close one, 43, 28. They'll see Muncie Central, South Adams. They'll see, will they see Jay County? It says they're on the schedule. Yeah, I got the region map. <laughs> Nick can see the uh, got a nice. I, I'll have to do a pan of the uh, of the room, so uh, he can see everything you guys say. So they'll see. Um, that'll be uh, Delta will see Jay County. It looks like, um, and Mount Vernon Fortville, which is a pretty solid team. And then they'll go to um, Mount Vernon Fortville, the one that's two A, that's kind of been in the running quite a bit, also. Uh, I believe they're three A, but okay. yes, but they've been they're in the running. Uh, all oh, them routers, yeah, 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 th- yeah. They have a pretty solid team. Um, so they, if they have everyone, I think they've been going late in football. Um, Hamilton Heights, we'll see. Obviously, them. Well, we'll see. Actually, you know, just kind of going over the uh, some of their results here. Um, well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Concord. Well, we'll see. they have Al Smith. They'll have Northwood before Team State. Northwood has a pretty solid team too. I think they're. Are they 2A? I think they might be 2A. I think they should. They're 4A in yeah, football. They're, yeah, they're 2A. They're I believe from what I from what I have it might be wrong. So, um let's see. What else is on the agenda? Anything um you guys are going to be at the Red Hawk duels this weekend as you're you're taking your second team there? Most of the second team. Okay. So, um what uh do you know, I mean, Belmont's there, Lakeland, Angola. So, I know we don't wrestle Belmont. We don't wrestle South Bend Riley. And there's one other team we don't wrestle. Um, is that only a one day thing now, or is that? No, two- it's it's a two day thing. So we'll get ten duels. Um, I could look. It's up here. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and eleven. Well, okay, so there's twelve teams. So you're not okay. So yeah. You're not, okay, I was wondering. I thought it was. I thought they had. 10 teams so they got 12 teams so you're not wrestling belmont and who else so here's who we do wrestle um we will wrestle goshen b west noble goshen john glenn laporte lakeland angola south ben adams east side and chesterton east side's there now and i didn't know if chesterton was there last year or not but i thought that was interesting seeing their name on there yeah that is interesting um we'll have uh we kind of got a little bit of flexibility with our team, having some depth in some spots. We'll have some kids, maybe two or three, that'll end up being varsity at the end of the year and might be varsity pretty early on in the year. We'll end up sitting them a couple meets so we don't go over their points. Um, we probably will have a couple varsity kids there. Yeah. But it'll be predominantly our B team, which is good for them to get experience. Yeah, getting 10 matches and get some solid teams. Um, you know, Belmont's going to be good. All the – Pretty much all those teams are going to have solid kids in their lineup, um, mm-hmm. and they're going to get. That's always a good, good thing, especially early on. And um, you know, being able to get ten matches is pretty good. Um, so that should be. I mean, that's first second year of this event, so that should be pretty solid. I don't know what Joe Butler's questioning. Holding microphones, yes, I don't. I, I don't have a uh, microphone holders yet. I had to get the desk and the couch and the TV. All this stuff. So, uh, so yes, Jose. Maybe you can send a donation, buy a couple subscriptions, buy some magazines. Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about the magazines. Got magazines. I don't know. Most of you, everyone should be have theirs now. We still have a few uh, out there. Nick, you got yours. How do you like yours? Oh, um, I didn't even really get to look at mine right off the bat because my twelve uh, year old had it, <laughs> and he's telling me everything in it. I'm like, well, hold on, let me look at it. So then I got to look at it, but he was really pumped about it and kind of took it over before I could finish looking at it. And included some baseball card type uh, inserts, so randomly in uh, in all of the uh, magazines. So hopefully, um, I got the all Laporte County edition. I got uh, Ashton Jackson, and I got the Christian Carroll uh, trading card. Nice. So you can now, now you can trade it with your friends and yeah. <laughs> start your own collection, yep. or or have them autograph it. Yeah. So. Uh, Frankie Porce versus Nick Krause. Uh-oh. 
I, I think I, I put my money on Kraus. I think he's a little bit bigger. <laughs> Didn't Frankie wrestle one thirty two? Yeah, he was like thirty five ish, maybe forty his senior year. But yeah, uh, Edwards uh, or Edward <laughs> Cook is uh, Cook is trying to uh, to send his kid out, his coach out to slaughter. I guess. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking there, Cook. You must be uh you must be raging raging already before Thanksgiving. <laughs> Here's one forty. Okay, there we go. Johansson knows everything about uh Hobart wrestling. You can play on the cards, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> All the guys that go to state get a bit oh man, that that'd take a while to to make. And I and, and I know I can tell you these covers there the person that did them did a really good job, but there's a lot of information on the back you didn't notice that has all their career stats, um, information. It'd be cool to put together, but uh, that would take a lot of time. Josh Boot just messaged me that the camera makes my face look fat. <laughs> it's always the camera's fault. Yep. <laughs> so Book's joined us from the uh, from Boone. Uh, he has internet. He does have internet over there. Yep. <laughs> he probably has a satellite internet. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, so what? Uh, uh, let's see what else do we have on the on the agenda this week. Um, let's see, uh, you got tonight. You had CP and Portage, so uh, so that should be interest. Uh, it sound like Crown Point one. I do not know if there's any results. I can go check real quick. I know ooh, it was fifty seven to twenty. So Frazier, um, Oscar Baca won at. 32, 38, Portage won. I can throw those up there for you. Uh, Gowen was there. Cruz wrestled. Oh, geez. They screwed up the weights. Is that screwed up in track wrestling for everybody? Uh, Yeah. <laughs> and they have, I thought they fixed it. I tried updating a kid the other day that I accidentally left off, and we don't have a 215 yet, so I just <laughs> put him in with no weight or something. Yeah. So those are all messed up weights. So, in, so 170, 160 is going. Um, I mean, you guys can't see this. Uh, Cruz was at 82. He beat Riser. Uh, Anthony White at 95. Paul Clark, Paul Clark, Cameron Woods over Logan Haney, Ishan Tobert at 113, and Sonny Sessa at 120 over Owen Button. So, um, so was it 57 to 20? Some guys are missing. Um, uh, Watkins, you can't tell who the special guest is. You, you gotta turn the camera on. <laughs> So um, that was a pretty good duel. Uh, Avon and Plainfield. It's always good to see these the lineups this time of year. It's always interesting to see where guys are actually going rather than where they were telling us uh, where they're going. <laughs> Maybe I got it wrong. CP and Vinny Steele. Oh, geez. Uh -oh. Reggie. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> going was not at 70. Uh, or at least that's what it says on the thing. Um, the weights are screwed up because of the track wrestling weights have the new weights for next year. So everyone's all messed up with their weights. So when you look at their results, it's going to be messed up. I thought it was fixed, but I guess not. And, and on top of that, there's about 200 extra teams on the uh, track wrestling. So, um, so yeah. Uh, any other Check my phone so I can. Um, going to uh, join us here uh, soon. So uh, let's see what else is going on this week. Uh, uh, Columbia City and Prairie Heights were wrestling tonight. I do not know. That, I'm sure somebody would have tweeted uh, something about that. Did Brett Smith? That should have been a pretty good duel. Do, what do you? Uh, they got pushed back, I believe. Um, friends with both coaches, obviously. Um, Columbia City had that run in football, so I believe it was supposed to happen maybe a week earlier. Yeah, and they pushed it back a little bit, which I do not see anything on any either social medias. They're they're uh, blackout and everybody. So, uh, I mean, it's like all these results. People are afraid to put on Indiana mat. Yeah, you can't stalk people. <laughs> so yeah, there's nothing there. Um, I know that got pushed back because of the football at uh, you know Columbia City went to regional in football. So they got uh so they pushed that back and that should be a pretty solid duel. Uh what do you uh 
any matches in there that you were kind of looking at or I just think overall it'd be a pretty good duel. Um, both teams are always tough and physical every year. Uh, Prairie Heights kids are mean. They can pin you from anywhere. Things can be going really good one minute and then all of a sudden not so good. The Columbia city kids, I just feel like they're always in pretty good shape, which we see them at the end of the year, um, a few weeks in a row, but I feel like they're always in pretty good shape. They're always pretty good wrestlers. They're well coached. So obviously it should be a pretty solid duel. Yeah. It's, uh, Overland says Columbia city won 42, 39. So obviously solid yeah, pretty duel. good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't even need it. Yeah. So I'm sure that was a, you know, we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll, we'll give, uh, Culp and, and and Brett Smith a little bit of time to put in results, but um, that should be you know Jeez. kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, um, so that should be interesting to see what uh, you know. I'm sure you're you're kind of eager to look at those results to see lineups and see where guys are slotting in at. Um, Columbia City, obviously a sectional rival, and then Prairie Heights a conference rival. So yep. it's always good. I mean, you're probably. You know, if you if you had an opportunity, you probably would have snuck up to wherever it was being held. And I match. have in the past, yeah. yeah. And that that should be, I mean, good early season match, and so that obviously curious of where those guys are at. Obviously, some of the Columbia City kids are probably going to be a little bit out of shape, but um, and then you got Perry and Harrison. Uh, West Lafayette should be coming up this pat this. Uh, uh, I think it's tomorrow. That should be a pretty solid match. Perry won the um, the Capital City Classic, and that was interesting. There weren't too many big results out of that one. <laughs> oh, jeez. You're laughing at Cook. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah, so that's going to be an interesting, uh, you know, that was, let's see, where's the results from that one? Last week, uh, so yeah, the, the Capital City Classic last week, and so was the um, the uh, the John Hurley, both two individual tournaments. Um, none of them had been put in, so I got to put them in. Um, so the Hurley was won by uh, by Warren Central, and the. Uh, I think they pretty well dominated. They had 356 points. Brownsburg's B team got second. And then Kokomo, Perry, Medi Perry Meridian's B team was fourth. Um, so some, not, no real big crazy results. Um, it's always interesting to see lineups like Warren Central's. They had 20 guys. Um, uh, they had 20 guys there, so you're kind of trying to figure out which ones are their starting guys. Um, he had Lavelle was at 32. Word is he's going 26. So that'll be interesting to see if he if he goes down there. Um, so that should be pretty good. Um, yes, Johansson, I believe I will be running the seating meeting at the Al Smith. So the uh, Perry Meridian over over uh, Westfield at the Capital City Classic. Uh, RJ, let's see, there was a couple. Toby Billerman, Jackson Heaston, uh, 5 0. Billerman just committed to Southern Illinois, yeah. Edwardsville today, or this morning. I saw that. Are they the so, Salukis? They are, no, they are not, they're like the, the I don't want to say, but no, the Salukis are Southern Illinois, Carbondale. Okay. That's where the Mo brothers went. Okay. okay. Two of the three. Um, let's see, any other? Uh, Keaton Morton over Noah Kane, I think. Kane was a semi-state level guy. Um, Ike O'Neill over Braden Spears 2-0. That's a pretty good one. Um, I don't think Spears was qualifier, but O'Neill was. Um, Hayden Bartle over Jameson Roll. Uh, Jason Rooney over Zach Huckabee. Huckabee, uh, Huckabee in third in thirty two seconds. So I'm curious. Of what, yeah, I'm curious what happened there. Um, that was uh, Huckabee was a state qualifier there. I'll be working. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be working for a lot of those nine C's. Those, the, those are your, those, those, that's where you make your money. I, th I think, uh, I think Edward, uh, why do I keep saying Edward? I think Cook, uh, <laughs> Cook uh, pays you b based on the number of nine C's you get at the Al Smith. So you got to work hard for those. <laughs> Unknown, undefeated, same, whatever. Make sure it's on the JV schedule though. 
Um, any other big results? Jalen Young. There's some guys missing from Warren Central that, uh, or from Perry, Perry Meridian. That uh, I'm not sure exactly where they are exactly, but I guess we'll find out soon. That's kind of the wrap from last week. Any we had some big duels this week. He's Mike needs to hurry up. What time is it? Nine forty eight. Nine forty eight. He's he's got to add in some stuff. Um, let's see where are we at. Um, we got Edgewood invite. Cascade, Floyd Central, Martinsville, Owen Valley. That should be a good uh, Owen Valley and Cascade. A couple small schools. Martinsville has some pretty good kids, and obviously Floyd Central is going to be uh, pretty good. Um, you have the Andy Overland World Championships, where you get a belt if you win, and you got to you get you have to pin him, I believe. So uh, you got Columbia City Homestead will be there. Let's see, this is, I think the Calves there. Cal is Cal there? And oh. I think Northridge also. Oh, nice. I have not. He probably didn't update the, the results there. So you got Yorktown, uh, Central Noble there. Central Noble has some solid kids. Um, DeKal will be there. Dwanger. Uh, is Dwanger at? They're not. They were, were they, they were pretty close, I thought. They've been close in recent yeah. years. They've been pretty close. Um, you got um, Homestead, Northridge, Yorktown. And Paramedians B team, so that should be a pretty good, uh, pretty good day of wrestling there. I do not know the pools or exactly how. I think he was looking for one more team. I think somebody might have dropped late. I'm gonna assume possibly Yorktown because they went. I might say oh, they, they went to at least regionals because they knocked off Norwell, which yeah. was a big upset. Yeah, I think they at least went. To, yeah, so they might have gone to semi state. So they, I'm assuming that's who uh, dropped out of that one. And we got, uh, so Hutchinson says Cascade and Floyd Central first round. That should be a good one. Um, Floyd Central, they always have guys that kind of are under the radar, and all of a sudden they come through, and, I mean, they're going to be well coached. They're going to be pretty solid teams, top to bottom, a pretty solid team. That should be interesting what happens there. Um, Evansville Central invite. Let's see what else we got. Um I guess Chesterton is not at the Ted DeRussi Invitational. You can take them out, out of that event. Um, I had them at uh, Goshen. Yeah. So that should be – yeah, the Gobbler at Southport. That's going to be an interesting event. I don't know if um, – they're basically doing pools, I believe. And so – and you can bring as many kids as you want. So that should be an interesting thing. So they got – okay, so Yorktown will be there. Uh Yorktown Central Noble Homestead two okay Homestead's putting in their B team so that was not the team that uh, dropped out late so here's how uh, that should be some good matches there uh, Yorktown Central Central Noble has kind of a sneaky good team I think they they got Copus back they got some other pretty solid kids yeah we were that's one of the few results you know like from this area that's pertinent to me that I saw and I'm like yeah they. They look improved. They look sneaky good. Um, they got a full lineup. I don't think they've had that the last couple of years, and obviously that's a huge difference right there, having a full lineup. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, NACC has a lot of smaller schools, and having that full lineup is, <laughs> is you know, that's going to get you six or 12 points in a lot of the duels. I know things could have changed, but um, we have, like, our fall NACC meetings, and coaches went over their numbers, and we talked about how many kids are out. And there were some that you know didn't have the greatest numbers right now, but there were quite a few teams out of the NACC that had 30-plus kids on their team, which I thought was pretty good compared to some of the years past. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. I think that a lot of them, I mean, you're looking at NACC, there's a lot, there seems to be a little bit more stability in the coaching, which helps keep yeah. numbers. Um, I know the Central Noble coaches have been there for a couple of years, uh, mm -hmm. like Smoker at Fremont. Finally, you know, getting it, he's had some solid kids, and I know he's been there for a few years. And once yep. they get that stability and those co that coaching, it helps out tremendously. So, um, I guess those are the big events this weekend. Unless anyone else has any comments, you you see anything else that's um, this weekend that you saw that? Oh, I guess there's a couple other events. Um, Lawrence North duels. Um, I was going to talk about talking to Mike about this. Uh Lawrence North won. They beat Franklin and Mount Vernon Fortville. And they have Warren this weekend. So 
interesting to see Lawrence North beat Franklin and Mount Vernon. Lawrence North. Lawrence North, I saw their kids all over the place this offseason. Um, I can't think of the guy's name that's coaching. I can see his face. Aven. Jacob Aven. Yeah, Jacob Aven. Yeah. Zionsville kid, right? Back yeah. in the day? Yep. And then Purdue? Yep. Yeah. I mean, they were everywhere. Their kids look strong. They look tough. They're wrestling hard. I've seen them at Yorktown. seen them at different places. So, you know, if they're where they're at right now because they've been putting in the work. Yeah, definitely. They brought they brought 10, 12 kids to IPO. Mm-hmm. And so they, I mean, obviously they are, they're, you know, Avon's getting those kids to buy in and that that's scary because we remember my, what Lawrence North yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. Lawrence North was probably, you know, they had a team that, you know, we talk about as being one of the top five best teams ever. So uh, that should be interesting to see how they, uh, how they continue to get better. I mean, we re wrestled them last year. Uh, they had some good athletes, probably just la lacking a little bit of experience, but Obviously, they got all that a lot of that experience this year's this they offseason. Got a guy who wrestled in the Big Ten as their coach, it's definitely yeah. going to help. And they got some big guys. They got um, uh, geez, and I, it's I, I haven't the uh, heavyweight from Cathedral that one state. Um, shoot, uh, Bernard. They have Bernard, oh, Bernard's on Bernard. staff. Okay. I think uh, Tommy Cash is there, and oh. so is they have a lot. Of, their head coach is the only one that doesn't have a state title. Um, okay. they, DeAndre yeah. Wilson, I think, is coaching there also. I think I saw something there. Pretty stacked staff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they so they got quite a few state titles. Avon does not. <laughs> hey, he's but he, in but he qualified though. for the NCAs. He he, he won he was he, he won a couple matches at the NCAs. So yeah. legs are stalling. Yes, legs are stalling, Johansson. And you probably are stalling. So um <laughs> so curious yeah, definitely curious about the Warren Central and um Lawrence North match tonight. I do not see it on the track right now, or no one's reported it. So, um, if anyone knows that, please tell us. Um, so that should be that's one that you know, keep an eye on them. Uh, they're in an area where they could make do some damage, and they, they keep getting better. If they have young young team kids that just keep getting better each week, um, you know, beating Franklin. Franklin's a little bit down, but you know, Tante always has well coached teams and teams that are going to be ready to wrestle so um that's going to be um interesting to see how they do throughout the season <coughs> yeah, we'll see oh oh yes <laughs> the one um the one interesting thing i we, it was on the board and someone asked if carmel and Penn wrestled this week and i saw it on Penn's schedule i did not see it on carmel's schedule so I made a phone call. Luckily, we have um, people that trust that we're not going to spill everything and, you know, any kind of juicy gossip or anything or just, you know, people trust that we're not going to trash people or kids on here. So they, they give us the information. And I talked to Coach Pendowski. I'm like, so what what did you guys do? He's like, we wrestled. We weighed in. We had refs. We wrestled matches. Um, but it was basically an exhibition which is kind of interesting. They actually went up there, um, took boys and girls teams. They wrestled, uh, played dodgeball, I guess. Carmel is not very good at dodgeball. So if you, if uh, anyone's doing dodgeball rankings, you can definitely put Penn over Carmel. Um, so just so you guys know for dodgeball rankings. So then they had like a lunch. Uh, the Penn parents brought them, you know, had lunch for everybody and stuff and kind of just a, an exhibition. I, almost kind of like a jamboree type thing with these or, you know, scrimmage that they have for football and basketball. So, um, kind of an interesting idea. I, none of the matches counted for seating or other than they counted as a way in, they counted as a point for them using that point for a mm -hmm. duel, but none of the matches were like official, official matches, but they wrestled someone else. So, um, it, interesting take. So, um, yeah, I was like, okay, that sounds interesting so what you ever it, it's interesting to see that they did that and you know they they put down the gloves of being competitors with each other and said hey let's just get some kids matches and in, in a relaxed environment and get some rust off and wrestle somebody else nobody thinks about doing that in this sport i mean but do it in every other sport i know our our basketball teams had a scrimmage or jamboree whatever you want to call it our football teams do every year yeah i guess we do ever thought about it like that with wrestling which why not Take your point off and, you know, 
yeah. go have some fun and wrestle. Yeah, everyone's so worried about making sure they get those matches and oh, I gotta use my point, you know, for that for that magical match. But getting those kids some rust and in in a relaxed environment, they can do things. They can, you know, not worry about winning or losing and just wrestling. I mean, you know, having like I know a lot of teams have a a uh, their final wrestle off under you know or even just you know exhibition in front of a crowd and stuff. It's not the same when you're wrestling someone with the same singlet, so it's yeah. interesting to see. So, um, yeah, good for them to do that and, you know, be able to use a, you know, sacrifice a point that you could have used elsewhere for a, a match that counts on your record. But, I mean, they're going to get enough matches. They're going to get enough good matches, and both coaches are, aren't afraid to get their kids, you know, have their kids come into sectional with five, ten losses. And it probably breaks up a little monotony, too. I talked about earlier with our season, the dips and valleys and – our kids are just ready to wrestle somebody else. Well, you got to do it and it's an exhibition, you know, jamboree, whatever you want to call it. So it probably help with that. Kids are probably excited about it. Yeah, definitely. So um I guess uh Warren Central beat Lawrence North fifty five to fourteen. So that's a that's a big win. Um so it'll be interesting to see some of the results there. Um obviously, you know, you gotta look at the matchups, you know, where there's some close matches in there, but uh you know, Lawrence North's getting better. Intermission, intermission dodgeball at duels. <laughs> nice. Yes, that's a great idea, Zach. Uh, so, um, I guess a couple other things as we are waiting for Mike to come on. Uh, if you have not checked out the article on Brownsburg that we had yesterday, pretty good article. Did you? Did you? Yeah, check? I read the whole thing. I thought it was super interesting. Um, because it just. You know, I've, I've talked to different coaches. I've talked to Coach Snyder here and there. Like, hey, we got this guy. You got that guy. Coaches help each other. Every coach does that. Like when we get ready for state or whatever. And um, I was like, man, how did how did they get so good so quick? Like it was just incredible. You know, because they were, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, kind of like a mediocre team, and and they've had a stretch now. Of, I think I read eight straight Heartland Conference championships, and obviously we see what they do every year at banker's life or gain bridge, wherever we got to call it, <laughs> yeah, yes. you know, but I, I got a lot of respect for coach Snyder. I got a lot of respect for their staff, but to read about it was pretty interesting. And, um, I can't remember the author, but I thought it was Anna, really well written. Anna Kaiser. She, Anna uh, Kaiser. Yes. Yeah. She, um, works for the Indianapolis Indians. So obviously during the winter, she's kind of bored and she's done stuff for flow. Um, done stuff for IA wrestle and then also for uh iowa hawkeyes and so it's about time she kind of ups her game and goes yeah. to a real website indiana and wrestling so, indiana Mad. yeah so um no so she's gonna follow them around all year probably about pretty much a weekly article maybe i don't know if we're gonna get one next week or not i gotta i'm not i, I think we are but uh, so there's a lot of stuff to talk about and kind of just the you know like you said the peaks and valleys there's gonna be I mean, hopefully there's not like crazy drama, but you know, there might be some wrestle offs that are going back and forth, you know, talking mm -hmm. about that type of stuff, anything that goes on be kind of behind the scenes, um, you know, kind of getting a, a feel for what it, what a team goes through during the season, you know, they're going to be going to, uh, Iron Man. Then the next week, Iron Man part two <laughs> at uh, crown point, uh, crown point's going to be there. Um, St. Ed's is going to be there. Wisconsin school. I'm not, I could not pronounce the name. It's going to be a lot of really good schools there. So it's going to be, you know, they're, they're going to see some teams again. So that's going to be another good one. So they're going to, and they have team state and then they, I think they go to Brexville. So they're going to, I mean, it's going to be pretty interesting to, you know, see how they respond to going to somewhere like the, like the uh, Ironman, which you know, if they get it, they're going to maybe only get a few places. I don't think they, they're not, I think they have a partial team. I'm not exactly sure how many kids they're going to be taking, but I know it's, I kind of have an, an idea, but I don't know exactly. Well, so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> kind of to speak on, you talked about wrestle offs and earlier you're going over some of the backups. Some of those kids might end up being their varsity kids at some point in the year or at the end of the year for those bigger schools that are stacked like that. I'm sure they're that competitive, but they're obviously going to the Ironman. It's called the Walsh Jesuit Ironman, right? Yeah. So if you've ever watched men of iron on, um, flow, Mm -hmm. you, that is awesome. Yeah. And it talks about Bill Barger and what his mentality was and how he did it. And you're kind of seeing Crown Point and Brownsburg do that. They're like, hey, we're not afraid of each other. Let's let's go get each other and then let's become these national powers. And that's, I mean, I feel like they're actually doing what happened in that little flow wrestling 
documentary, which is awesome. I mean, I've watched that documentary so many times because <laughs> that's how I think, man. Like, yeah. we need to wrestle better people. We need to wrestle the best to just compete, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The new uh, travel roles, you know, have you guys thought about looking elsewhere or, you know, trying to go into Ohio or Michigan? And we or... brought it up during our little coaches' meetings, but um, it hasn't materialized yet. Right now, we're just trying to get the conference we're in to <laughs> do uh, – what we want them to do and free up a couple schedule points for us. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have what? 11 teams in the conference. Yeah. So we have 10 duels that are on that, which next year they're going to go back to this. Um, I, I believe we might go to something where we get seven of those knocked out in a weekend, seven or eight. Yeah. So free up some points where you yeah. can get some fun duels. Yeah. So yeah, you definitely, you only that, you know, that uses up two points instead of five or four or five. Yep. So, and Kevin Watkins supports your, uh, your uh, theory there or your proposal. So that's good. Um, so yeah, um, the Brownsburg articles are going to be pretty good. Obviously that's a good one um, to start off with. And, you know, when, when you get that, super, the you know, superintendents at like half your matches, he was at, I remember meeting him at the, the dream team and, you know, Derek's like, Oh, this is a superintendent. I'm like, Oh geez, I wouldn't, you know, with the super, how many, you know, events does the superintendent attend? Sporting events, they're they're pretty busy people, and mm-hmm. they, but you know, that's pretty neat to see them attend him. You know, attending all those events. So, um, and then you got a Mikey uh, Robles article, real good stuff about him. Um, had some you know really rough year last year, and comes back. He's ready to wrestle this year. He's gonna be kind of a a, a wild card kind of. You know, you're not just sh- sure exactly what's gonna come out of him, but he's pretty tough, and definitely cannot overlook him. Um, you know. Coach uh, Sandifer took him under his wing and, you know, doing, helping him get things right. And hopefully good things happen from that. So um, that should be a good one. And then tomorrow, I believe we're going to have something on Cascade. I don't know if uh, I haven't gotten official word, but I'll find out tomorrow if we have it. So, <laughs> so Cascade, we wrestled them this summer. Um, excuse me. They have some really tough kids, mm-hmm. some very, very tough kids. And I know coach is doing a good job down there. Um, and again, it's just talk about where you see people all over the place and it makes a difference mm-hmm. if they're visible. Hey, there's Cascade. Hey, there's Lawrence North. Hey, there's Gary. Hey, there's Hobart. You see that like, and those teams are doing well. Like it's just not a huge surprise. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's something Mike and I always harp on, you know, you got go to, go to folk style state, go to freestyle state. What, what coaches are there? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's no secret that if you put the time in and those coaches are there, your teams are going to, yeah. you know, who's at Disney, who's at, you know, who's, who's doing those things and you know that extra stuff you know and even if they're not i didn't mean to cut you off there but yeah even if they're not able to like you know people have jobs they have families they have careers not everybody's a teacher and a coach i get the summers off i signed up for this it's awesome you know but what if sorry heard that noise (laughs) you know uh, a coach doesn't have time but he's at least pushing his kids hey got this opportunity for you you can go do this with this team you can go do this and we know some teams around us that do that, and that's that's still accomplishing something. You're getting your kids out there, getting them to do stuff. That's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, just getting that time, you know, getting that mat time and getting to getting out of your comfort zone. And main thing, I mean, getting going to see good competition, going up. I know you guys went, went to uh, Adrian up in Michigan. Yeah. See some different competition this summer. Um, just, you know, getting those kids together, getting them to train. And I think that I, I know talking to coaches when – we were trying to get set up for Disney. He's like, Disney's not the, you know, Disney's great, but he's like, we got these kids in for a month before that training in a in season level training environment of two or three days a week. And, you know, they, they have fun at Disney, but they forget that they put in that month to two months of hard work and technique and conditioning and stuff Mm -hmm. and everything that, you know, adds up to that. And that's how you get better is you put in that good month of work. So, um, kind of having that carrot at the end too, like, Hey, yeah. this is what we're training for guys. Yep. And then, Hey, we're done. Hey, go play football, go play soccer, go run cross country. You might not see him again, but we already got them for those couple months or whatever. Yeah. So, um, man, Mike needs to hurry up here. <laughs> we do have a few other things to talk about, but he's kind of going to be the one on that. I'm going to check his ETA. Um, this has to turn into me talking about Garrett wrestling the whole night. I can do it. 
<laughs> talk about Garrett back in 96 and 97. I can't talk about it as much <laughs> unless I look at the spreadsheet you left me. <laughs> There's not much to talk about from there. The, the 97 team used to be, uh, it was the winningest team at, at that time. So had the most wins. So, <laughs> you know, Brett, you can drive here and stuff. Okay. Mike is about 15 minutes away. So oh, he booed me. <laughs> I don't know. Brett, Brett's booing somebody. Uh, Maybe he's tight. I don't know. Um, so, um, yeah, but J- Josh Waters, like Titus went to Disney with, uh, I think he went to with Delta, maybe Delta or Jay County. One of those, two, I think those teams went there. So, <laughs> so, uh, yes. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, Brett's coming. Hey, I'm sorry. He's not in a deer stand. So, <laughs> but anyway, um, so what do you, I guess we'll, we'll talk a little bit. What, what are you guys looking forward to this year? What's, uh, what's, uh, anything I know you guys added DeKalb this year in your schedule, any other schedule changes? Yeah. I'm excited about DeKalb just because I think about Garrett and DeKalb. Why do we not have a duel for so many years? Like, that's just crazy to me. I think we play slash run compete against them in every other sport. So like, that's something that needed to happen. Yeah. Um, it's a good rivalry. It's healthy. I'm excited about that. Um, we haven't, we really haven't been able to make that many changes because of you know, the way our conference is set up, yeah. which is fine. Our conference is fun. It's awesome, but there ends up being a little bit of monotony there wrestling some of the same teams so many times. Um, I I look forward personally to the Al Smith team. State's always fun, but the Al Smith, I feel like Al Smith is, I don't know. It's just something about that place. That's my favorite tournament all year. Favorite individual weekend yeah that's it's a fun tournament i know uh the decal match uh most people outside the decal county don't know that there is a it's not quite Thanks bitter it's not as bitter as it used to be <laughs> um rivalry between garrett and decal but it's always been one of those rivalries a, a penn mishawaka type rivalry yeah and I, we were talking before we started i they I, i'm trying to I, they rest you guys wrestled for a couple years at Carroll. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would have been about 10 years ago, either a year or two or there. But before that, I think they got dropped. Actually, I think they got dropped in 2004 or 2005. So, since in the last 18 years, we've only we, wrestled like two or three times. We did wrestle them in 17. That was the last year we wrestled them at Carroll Super Duel. I remember yeah. that because we had one kid who. Didn't finish a match. It's just something I remember. I don't yeah. need to say it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He didn't finish the match the way we wanted him to, and I remember that match. So 17 was the last year we wrestled him. But before that, I mean, I think that was a two- or three-year span where we wrestled him, and before that, it just didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. So that's – I know – I want to say it was like four or five was the last year they wrestled him, and then until you guys met uh, – until the cow was at the Carroll Super Duel for a couple years. Mm-hmm. So – um that should be uh the Al Smith uh, as Brett said, the Al Smith is loaded. It that's gonna be that's gonna be a fun seating meeting. <laughs> yeah. L- luckily I'll uh word on the street is I'll be there again. So are you are you actually running it? That's the word on the street I got. So I think it'll go pretty quick. Let it go yeah. long enough so I can get a few pieces of the Jets pizza. <laughs> but I think it'll go a little quicker. But that pizza's that's pretty dang good pizza. Yeah, so that that should be a good good fun seating meeting. I, I know they're we're working on some possible changes, updates. Um, so I got to talk with my guy, Steve about that and see what we can do, uh, uh, see what we can do there. Um, so quality losses. Yes. Quality losses. Hey, quality losses are, are, are real at times. I mean, if you wrestle a good schedule, you can't get, get blasted. I mean, crown Point's going to come in there with some losses. You can't knock them for, you know. Logan Frazier comes in there with two or three losses. You're going to say, oh, nope, he's not going to be number one seed. <laughs> well, returning state champ. So yeah. Yeah. So I guess it, we can give it to him. Yeah. You know, may, may, maybe we will get Julian Reams seeded this year. I don't know. I, uh... <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and I knew who that kid was. Um, I don't know him on a personal level, but yeah. Chase Leach had had to wrestle him a couple of times yeah. in offseason things. I'm like, oh, man, they're not seeding him. And I believe he was a runner up, <laughs> wasn't he? Yeah, him and uh and um, shoot, uh, what's his name? <laughs> the one back in the day that was a runner up, and it was Hobart kid, um, Fator. I'm pretty sure. 
Yeah. They didn't seed him because some criteria wasn't met from the year before. And I'm yeah. pretty sure he ended up being a, a runner up. Yeah. Um, he would have finished fourth at the NECC. <laughs> yeah. Uh, C- Goodwin. Why did I think good? Goodwin was. Uh, yep. For Goodwin Torf was. They, they didn't want to seed Goodwin either because he didn't have any results. And I'm like, dude, he's good. He's good. Yeah. You guys, you guys really don't. You guys want, really want him and Weems just to be randomly drawn in there. The Columbus then, East a few years ago. Um, Coach Cooper's got pretty good um reputation i guess you'd say yeah so when he started talking about one of the rooks brothers he's like i'm just telling you he's pretty good yeah and we're like all right all right, all right how good <laughs> i think we ended up seeding whichever rooks brother that was at the time too yeah yeah i think that was the the younger one in yeah that was like i think i was i remember i positive i was there i was like you gotta see this guy you can't yeah. i mean you gotta you gotta realize that some of these guys are pretty good so that should be uh you know, that's going to be a pretty good, I mean, geez, just looking at 170. You have Roman, Goodwin, Myers, Caden Lone, Clouser, Harden, Cashman, because Warren Central's there. Top eight. The top eight guys are all there right now at 170. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Wow. <laughs> then we just see them like that. Be out of there. Free line. Way. You got. Yeah, uh, Elkhart, Zionsville, um, Western, Western there, and yeah. So, jeez, wow. that's that's pretty pretty deep weight class. So that's gonna be interesting to see. You know, it's gonna be interesting to see those guys. One thirty two. Yeah, that's gonna be. Yeah, Walker, Monado, Courtney, Demarco, Josh cool. Johnson. Um, I don't think Munster's not there. Carmel's not there. That one get drops off after the first few guys. Um, twenty six will be good. You got Frazier, Lavelle, um, East Central is not in there. I believe that was premature of what they put in there. Fairly positive. Yeah, they are not there. Um. Got Brady, Reyes, uh, West Hart, Wesley Harper, Iat Jaeger, and then I mean, I mean, everything we're saying right now could obviously change. All of a sudden, the kids at thirty-two. All of a sudden, the kids down to twenty-six. Yeah, I mean, this is just what it's at right now. Yeah, yeah, things are gonna shuffle, especially before then. There's a lot, a lot of matches are gonna happen, and I know, I know, Mike's been. Uh, updating the the rankings and i kind of was peeking at you know some of the weight changes um i'll let him expand a little bit more when he gets on here but uh brownsburg looks like um haynes and um haynes and hockaday are switching looks like hockaday is going to be up at uh 20 and haynes is going to be up at uh down to 20 or 13 and the pull these up Mike's gonna yell at me. So it looks like that's gonna be switch, which that's that's an interesting uh a switch. Um Hay- you have Haynes Jondras, uh Jalen May was up at one twenty, most likely. Probably a lot of people are thinking he's gonna go one thirteen. I guess we'll find out. Um so that you know, those top three are pretty solid. Um so um I think Brownsburg's trying to, you know, sneak two you know, try to get two titles. Obviously they're gonna try to get as many titles as as uh possible. But uh, obviously, they think they can get, you know, they think Hockaday could probably take out Bellerman and Jackson and Gilbert. Maybe, maybe a little bit easier than Haynes. I think they're probably both pretty good. They're both pretty good there. But um, so you got to kind of sometimes you got to roll the dice. Maybe Hockaday might be a little bit bigger than he kind of anticipated. So that should be interesting. I know Crown Point's having some, uh, they're shifting some weights around um, with. You know, some people having a little bit harder time to make weight and things like that. So it should be interesting to see how those things. I'll let Mike expand a little bit more on that when he gets on here. He might be five minutes away now. Um, so, yeah, Al Smith's pretty good event. Team State, and you guys will be at Jay County. And yes. Yeah, so shorter drive. Yeah, it was Martinsville last year. Yeah. I was like, Ugh. That's out in the middle of nowhere. So then uh, Brownsburg will have 4A, and then one in – 3A will be at Franklin. Mm-hmm. So how do you like the uh, split up? I I don't really ever. I'm going to be. I don't think about anybody else besides myself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Okay. We're not going down to Martinsville. It's a little bit closer. So that's yeah. what I like. 
Um, so you have, you say one A with four A? Yes, or one A is what three A. So then they're keeping two A. Two A is exclusive. Yes, two A is exclusive how, because how good it is. Yes, yes, that's why they're doing it. Two A is so good that they're keeping it exclusive. Yeah. So th- yeah, that'll be you know, yeah. I'm I'm kind of as as a fan. I like the at the Coliseum. Everybody, you can go see it. You can go watch. You know, you hear you hear, you hear a bunch of commotion and you go I watch a match. That. Yeah. So. Um, the Coliseum was awesome. Yeah. And then if you had a buy round or it was your round off, you could kind of meander around. And because even though we're all, you know, we're coaches or kids or wrestlers, we're all fans too. So it's, it's fun to go see what's going on or, you know, we just, even in the middle of your dual match, I get zoned out and I kind of black out, but every once in a while you hear the rah, like, you get rubber neck and yeah. yeah, who was that? <laughs> yeah. You do that. Uh, that, that, the worst is doing that at semi-state or state and you hear something going on oh, next door. Next, right oh, there. Next, they focus, they focus. I'm a different person in semi state. <laughs> I try to keep it together, but yeah. that's just that's a rough day. Yeah, yeah. So um yeah, the Coliseum was I you know, it's nice to have everything in one spot. So uh that's gonna be interesting where I I'll maybe end up at Cook, you're trying Dunford. to stick all your coaches on me. <laughs> He he won't take he, he's he he's like the final boss. You have to go through all his assistant coaches yeah. first before you get to him. He's, got a ladder he's to like get to he's him. like Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> he's like Bowser. Uh, everyone else, you know, you got Porus as Bowser Junior, and you know, it's just like it's like you know, you got to go through you got to go through all them before you get to him. So, yeah, Johan, uh, maybe Johan Johansson's uh, Bowser Junior probably. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, It'd be it'd be neat to have it, you know, in one spot. I somebody was talking to me. I can't remember who it was offhand. I was talking about the fairgrounds possibly. Um, actually, I, it was Johansson <laughs> about a proposal to do it at the fairgrounds. So that'd be in the the uh, state fairgrounds. Oh, the Pepsi, Pepsi Cal- Coliseum. Yeah, I well, it's, it's a farmers. Yeah, that'd be. It, it's. I think you got to. It's real close as far as how many mats you could fit in the main, but they have those auxiliary places right next door that you could fit. It was pretty good sized. Um, seen an MMA set up in there. Yeah, I fought in there, and I was like, "Oh, this is pretty big, actually." I don't know how many yeah. mats you could get down though. Yeah, yeah, that's mats are a different beast when in because you can't you can't fudge them together. They gotta what Rebone said. It's not yeah. a terrible idea. Yeah. What color? I mean, the, the main thing is you got to have a facility that can host have twenty mats, pretty much, which that limits and cost effective. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the biggest thing. Um, and it's not an easy thing. And and jo- Johansson, I did see his little bit of a proposal. He has a pretty solid proposal of like sessions and times, and you know how things would run. So it'd be a good, it'd be a full two days of wrestling. So it, it could work. I think that's what's cool about our sport when we get the opportunity to do it. So like football, let's say that I still lived in New Carlisle or Rolling Prairie. I never lived in New Carlisle. But <laughs> let's say I was, everybody's like, are you from New Prairie? I'm like, I'm not from the school. I'm from Rolling Prairie. It's <laughs> New Carlisle, Rolling Prairie. But, but, you know, let's say I was in that town now in New Prairie, you know, they made state and I wanted to go watch that. To be completely honest, like I'm a football fan, but I don't care that much about watching the 5a game the 6a game or the other games like i'm going to watch new prairie and i'm getting out or wrestling like i'm a huge wrestling fan so like state is awesome team state when we had everybody there it was just really cool Mm -hmm. and like you said the roars of the crowd and all that stuff like i would love it if we got it back in one venue yeah yeah definitely i mean like you said even when you guys have some downtime um you know one and two a kind of get done a little bit faster so you guys have sometimes a little more downtime and you can go watch a, a three or four a big match and stuff, and you know it's 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 fun to be there. Um, there's a lot of people to talk to, a lot of people. You know, everyone's all in. One, it's almost like a mini state. Oh my gosh, you hear who pin so and so? You yeah, know, so. all that stuff that goes on. And and you could have it at the farm too. You know, unlimited parking and mat space, <laughs> fresh air. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, it should actually it'd be a good drive. I'd be good with that. It's not too far <laughs> yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. You guys need to add on, make a field house. Field house slash uh, uh, milk house. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, that'd be, yeah. I mean, it should be, you know, I I like having it in one venue. It's it's hard to follow. I mean, from, you know, it's it's actually easier to follow when you're at home if you're going to follow all four of them. You know, if you're you're not following all four of them, you know, it's kind of boring just to be there for, you know, I mean, there's going to be some good matches. You're going to be focused. 
you're not going to be really worrying too much about what's going on in the other places, but it's going to be, after, I, I guarantee after the, after you guys are done, you're going to be on your phone looking up all the Every results. Year. <laughs> Every year. And that's part of it too yeah. is like, Hey man, we might have to wrestle that kid at state individually with, you know, whatever kid I have on my team. We know that, Hey, this kid that you might be wrestling might be in here today. Sometimes it's nice to go over there and Hey, look, he's wrestling somebody good. I'm going to watch that match. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Being able to just go, Hey, Hey Hayden, go watch this match. Yeah. You know, you know he, while you are coaching and stuff, Hey, you know, so-and-so is coming up. Yeah. That, that's a, that's a big, um, just being able to see those guys and seeing them in person. And, you know, you hear all oh, this guy's huge. He's, he's jacked and stuff. Then seeing him and realizing, yeah, he's jacked, but he's, Four foot five, yeah, <laughs> you know yep. that type of stuff. So yeah, uh, I, you know, you know, since the president, you know, future president, you know, Jason Edward Cook is in here. He should, you know, start proposing this to, uh, yeah. to you know. I mean, I think he has the the power soon, so he's going to be the new president. And you know, we we, we elected him. Well, I didn't elect him. I'm not a member. So <laughs> <laughs> you may have elected him. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, um. So, back to any other stuff. Um, we should Mike should be coming on pretty soon, I believe. <laughs> he's gonna add in. So, yeah, that was fifteen minutes ago, so he's we're we're getting close. Um, let's see. Uh, I guess tell. I, I, we probably should have started off with uh, the introductions. Every, a lot of people know who you are, but tell tell everyone a little bit more about like your career and stuff. In wrestling, um, you kind of took a little bit of a newer path when you went to college and stuff. So talk about like how you got started and all that fun stuff. Yeah, yeah so I'll try to make it real quick. Um, I love WWF, um, WWE, whatever you want to call it now. Um, that's what I watched all the time. So when I was in fourth grade, they passed out a sheet for interested wrestlers. And I was like, oh, yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> then my dad's like, hey, this isn't going to be what you think it is. Because he had wrestled and uh, I didn't even know that at the time. So I went to practice and it, it wasn't what I thought it was, <laughs> but, um, I stuck it out, finished the year and then did really well fourth through sixth grade. Um, but I wasn't, it was against other kids who had never wrestled before. We had just started the program for our elementary. I, I really didn't have a whole lot of real success till my senior year. I placed third. And, um, in my mind, I was going to go to the closest college that had wrestling at the time. That was what I was going to do. I, I didn't care what letters I got. I was going to go closest college ahead wrestling so it was going to be bethel college until they dropped their program because that was 25 minutes from my house <laughs> um so i went to tri-state i went on a visit there and i'm like well this is a small town atmosphere i like it this is a good place um they clearly um changed their name to trine colors changed um did really well there i uh, went to nationals got done with that stuck around this area i helped recruit indiana tech's first team and then got a job offer at Garrett, had an interview, and um, here I am. Yep. And you were there at Tri-State slash Trine, their, the second year of the program, correct? Yep. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so they, uh, and you know, program wasn't even allowed to wrestle at NCAAs until what, your junior year? No, my sophomore, sophomore year. Sophomore year, okay, yep. sophomore year. Okay, I knew it was. Oh. And that was interesting, too. Like, like I said, I just... I, I didn't really have an end in mind at the time. I'm like, I want to wrestle in college. This place is close, close enough to get away, but close enough to go home. And it helped when I went on the visit. I really liked the people there. I liked the coaches. Um, that first year was interesting. Cause you, you're all excited for like college wrestling. And then you get in the middle of the season. You're like, well, there's no really like ending point. There's yeah. nothing you can shoot for. Yeah. You know, so that was odd. But then after that, it was fun. And we ended up having – really good teams at trying specifically my junior and senior year we were we were pretty tough and it was fun and a lot of those guys are coaching now which is pretty interesting i know that pompey's indiana tech's coach yep um i can't name the number of people that are coaching now i see them all the time <laughs> um i feel like a lot of the kids that went to peru that were at trying are coaching somewhere now you've got like george marku at huntington north mm -hmm. um zach leffel's coaching um i think still maybe helping peru just a yeah. ton of these kids you see coaching all over the place that we wrestled with. And that's pretty neat. Pretty yeah. Cool. Yeah. That definitely. That's uh, it's always neat to see those guys, you know, people you went to school with and stuff. And I, I was, I was actually at, well, I mean, you know, I was at Tri-State that first year mm -hmm. and it was, it was definitely weird. It's like, you had a bunch of guys that had never, only one person on the team had wrestled college before and everyone else hadn't. And you're trying to teach kids how to wrestle 
you know what college wrestling is without having someone that has wrestled yeah a college wrestler it's like guys this is a little bit different they're mm-hmm. gonna be physical they're gonna be mean they're gonna try to hurt you they're gonna try to rip your arm off and beat you with it I, <laughs> and i'm not kidding <laughs> that ended up being one of my favorite parts about college wrestling <laughs> like you could do stuff that just you couldn't do in high school wrestling yeah. You know, so to do a version of a Gable Turk or a Bone Arrow, whatever you want to call it, you can turn somebody like that in college. Yeah. That was awesome to me. <laughs> you know, just the meaner things you could do that you couldn't do in high school. I love that part of it. And just, you know, it was fun. I feel like every match was a fairly tough match, which made it pretty cool. That's how you want to compete. Yeah. So that that, that definitely, um, and, and then obviously you got into a little bit of MMA and yeah, wow. fought here and there. and Yeah, I had 27 fights when I was a freshman at... Yeah, I was, I was still Tri-State. I ordered a pizza, and there was a flyer on it for interested fighters. And um, I called the number up, and the guy had a few options for a potential opponent. One of them was a kid that I was one and one against in high school wrestling. So immediately, I'm like, well, I want to fight him. So I went and fought him at the one-on-one lounge up in Angola. People were smoking in the crowd. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was just the Wild West. There was no sanctioning yet. So... <laughs> <laughs> ripped out 10 amateur fights didn't lose um just wrestling people i learned a little bit of boxing and jiu-jitsu and and when i turned pro i took it more serious and had 17 pro fights and did fairly well nice but uh, not fun to cut weight so oh mike wants in mike finally wants in right. we gotta catch him catch him up on what uh what all is going on let's see if uh hopefully this works we had, we did not test we did not test okay. what's up what's up we finally have the I just read the comments <laughs> uh, been, let's make sure everyone can hear you so how, how was coaching did you guys win nah we lost six five jeez we had five early and then uh ended up uh, coming back five five and we ended up giving up a run late so I'd have been a little bit quicker, but Maribel Portillo's service wasn't as quick as it was. <laughs> so, so I'm still so eating. Like, did you at least get a chocolate cake shake? No. <laughs> no. Mike's eating on the uh, on the, on the show, so <laughs> it's it's the uh, the sport dad. You either eat at four thirty sport sport family. You either eat at four thirty or nine thirty. So. Oh man. <laughs> <clears throat> I wish we had like five o'clock warm ups. It's hard, man. You get home, kind of like rush out the house. Oh yeah. So, what you guys covered? I thought a lot of good wrestling tonight. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I wanted to, you to probably help talk about um, Crown Point and um, Crown Point and Portage wrestled tonight. I don't know if you saw the results. Um, I did. I was watching it as I was waiting for my food. <laughs> so the uh, I guess the one thing I guess we need to kind of the elephant in the room. Well, I got this nice background. Oh, nice. My 16. <laughs> so it was a Sunday. We haven't taken it down yet. Nice. You need to keep that there. I know. <laughs> Adds a little sparkle. Um, the, I guess the elephant in the room, Crown Point doesn't have a certain wrestler that is ranked number one in their lineup. So. A couple, um, a couple guys, but yeah, that one's. Yeah. Um, and, and he wasn't in your. Uh, you kind of let some cats out of the bag lot yesterday. Um, Hawkins, he's out for right now. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's all we're going to say. Basically he's out and if he gets back, yeah. he'll get back in the rankings, but I don't know if you want to say anything else or not. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I think kids make mistakes. I mean, as a parent of a teenager, I hope that, <laughs> no. She makes good choices, but you never know. I mean, a lot of people on here, obviously, they watch the show, they have kids. But um sounds like uh, some tough choices, and he's out of the lineup right now. I think maybe he'll be back in January, maybe not. I don't know. But I think they, they'll have a better idea next week. But um, I, mean, I think they had a couple guys out, right? I think uh, Murphy wasn't in the lineup. I don't know if she has full eligibility yet. Uh, I think Reinhardt's still coming down. So it's going to be a little bit. I mean, it's a hard cut. Like, he's not like a small. He wasn't a small 52 as a freshman. Yeah. I don't know about you guys. Were you guys still growing when you were a freshman? Uh, no. I, I, grew after no. My, I, I grew after I graduated high school. <laughs> I'm on a one-weight class every year. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, like, you're talking about a, 
a 52 pound freshman and return to that way is just, you know, kind of being in a tough room. So I think that they're going to have to bring him down gradually. Um, who else was out of the lineup today? Ball wasn't in the lineup. Um, I thought I saw Ball in no. the lineup. Yeah, yeah. Ball, ball was up away. Uh, no, was Ball in the lineup? That's... I think they're going to have to, like, get creative in some of those spots. Like, uh, it looked like um, 52, 45. I know they had some some pretty tough. I know they had some good wrestle offs um, on Friday. I think like six was a good wrestle off with uh, Haney and um, uh, Westfall. I think they both got in the lineup today, right? Because yeah, they're down. Uh, Gendrist is injured. Yeah, Cruz wasn't in so, there. Cruz, that's who yeah. So Noah uh, Rian Gendrist was injured at thirteen. Sonny Sessa won his wrestle off against Captor. That was I think that was really good. Um, I know he's been. They, they said it was a good match. I didn't get to see it. I, I thought about stopping over there and, and kind of checking it out. Uh, but, I mean, just depth in the room. I mean, both of you guys have been in good rooms. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then, I think um, Captor was a point away from, you know, two points away from being a state qualifier last year at 120 or 113. Then you got a freshman coming in pushing for a spot. I mean, obviously, Sessa's name is pretty synonymous with uh, – wrestling in indiana or northwest indiana but that was pretty good uh frazier at 26 oscar baca's replacing uh landon hawkins right now yeah and that and he he had a pretty good win baca beat um tv delgado who's pretty solid he's been in the semi-state rankings so that's a pretty yeah. solid win for him yeah how about like these guys just bring out ISWA medalists. I think Nick Kennison was an IWS, ISWA medalist. Yeah. I think uh, you know Christian Washington had a really good match with Michael Major at IPO. I think he's a guy that's really good. We've seen him when we did the um, – he was filling in for Roberson two years ago. We did the Perry Meridian, like, triple duel. Yeah, he, he, uh, some, he, he is pretty tough. And, you know, another year in that room is and, – and plus he uh, – I guess he decided to gain some weight. <laughs> yeah, I thought you know I, I I didn't know if he had transferred over the summer because he was wrestling for um what's um uh, is it this, not not Mr. Bailey what's the other uh, the one from Home on Flossmore like Victory Elite or something yeah yeah or, like he was wrestling with those guys all summer which is a pretty you know Bulldogs does a good job of and Region does a good job but I mean those guys do a pretty good job too you got some guys over there nationally ranked. So that's that's interesting. That was, I mean, Crown Point, and then um, we already kind of leaked out that uh, Brownsburg is having a little bit of shift at thirteen and twenty. Yeah, um, I, I had heard this summer that uh, Hockaday was getting big, bigger. Like I think he had certified at thirteen, but and that gives him a lot of flexibility in that lineup. And as a fan, I mean. I'm not as a coach, I don't have to coach, but as a fan, like that's an exciting matchup with uh, Ashton Jackson possibly and Hackaday. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and yeah. you know, the brackets always work out where it's under the lights like that, so <laughs> yes, <laughs> I mean the yes, summer all, every yeah. year. Every year that, that that works out, you know. If if if, uh, if some people had their their way, that'd be a Friday night match. <laughs> yeah. Um I think that, you know, that sometimes styles make matchups, and I think Haynes and uh, Jackson have a very similar style, and Hockaday is a little bit different, so I think exciting, uh, excited for that possibility. But 120 is always like a stacked weight class. Yeah, I mean, you already have Billerman sitting in there. I mean, Billerman's no one, no slouch at 20. Billerman had a good win this weekend, too, over uh, Heaston, Jackson Heaston. Yeah, yeah, and you got Gilbert, Isaiah Schaefer, Neil Mosier, Dominic Brown, Rio, I think Rio was down to 13. Yeah, I see Rio was at 13, and uh, Little Chef was up at 20 today. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we're going to be doing some weight shifts, I'm sure. Probably after this weekend, we'll have a pretty big, massive update of uh, rankings and stuff. So, yeah. um, anything you saw this past week that, uh, I mean, I know uh, I know you've been a big fan of Mikey Robles and seen that article on him and kind of gave us the heads up on that one. Yeah, real good kid. Uh, his girlfriend plays softball with us. Um, so I see him a lot this summer and uh, this fall. You know, just, I mean, we kind of heard a little bit last year. Uh, I mean, he had some really good wins coming into Indiana. Uh, I think he had a win over, um, and freestyle obviously is different. 
not like super different, but he had a nice win over uh, Bryce Lowry, I think two years ago. And uh, so he was ranked pretty high last year. And then, I mean, if you read the article, just kind of, you know, tough, man. I think that's like the hardest thing you, you really like doing this. Like, obviously we get a lot of insight that a lot of people don't get, I guess. And um, I was just talking to one of my friends who was, you know, kind of in the area. They 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 follow wrestling, but not super, you know, a bunch. And his daughter plays softball, and you just kind of like hear some of the backstories and stuff, and it's it's really interesting. It's a different insight of like what these guys are dealing with or what they're not dealing with. You know, you would hope that everyone just has this perfect season, no injuries, no drama in their life, but it's, it doesn't always work that way. And you know, that wasn't self-inflicted drama for Mikey. It was, you know, just some stuff, and I'm glad that, like, he's found a good, you know, a good stable thing with, uh, you know, his girlfriend's grandma and, you know, obviously the Sandifers and those guys at Mishawaka do a great job. You know, Steve, Steve's one of the best dudes, like, just a good dude, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, that's definitely a good place for him to land, and, you know, you know, Steve obviously wants him to, you know, do well in wrestling, but at the same time, you know, that's secondary to just getting things, getting things on track, life and everything so that's a pretty are you guys in the same place what do you, yeah yeah <laughs> studio dude we're in the we're in the new studio <laughs> i th- new... I see i see the pictures but i didn't know like you guys were just gonna be hanging out in a studio yeah we got and the new studio cool. going so <laughs> hey when you're when you're in the in Wayne, you can do it you know I, I gotta get a couple more cameras set up and stuff and uh we're, we're working i gotta get obviously we have to hold the microphones so um gotta work on that or we could award the headsets i guess <laughs> So yeah, he's in the studio. He's he's, nice. he's at Victory Bay. Hey, man, you got, checking out baseball cards. Yeah, we were looking at baseball cards beforehand. Checking out the Cubbies, some yeah. old ones. Got 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 a Mark Grace auto. Got a Greg Dykeman auto also yesterday. So nice. So yeah, um, yeah, we're we're at the studio. <laughs> yeah, we're rappers there, Smith. Uh, so, nice. Sorry, uh, bear hug, burner doodles. We can't. We don't have enough room to wrestle in here. The wrestling room is actually there's not two much room below. here to wrestle necessarily. Yes. <laughs> We're a little bigger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll have to we'll we'll, we'll put that on uh, hold till uh, the day after never. <laughs> that's the that's the old Merv Griffin set, right? Yeah. From time so, brought it in. I like it. Yeah, Rocco would have been in here if we had let him. He was he was all like gonna hang out and everything <laughs> he was getting amped up we started talking about them baseball cards <laughs> yes That's so sure um so uh the brownsburg article what do you think about the brownsburg article Ah uh, man i, I told kim and I, and I don't know like sometimes like you text and it come comes across monotone or whatever but um i thought like it was like reading i mean i don't know if this is like legal or illegal like it's like reading like an espn article like one of those like e60 like I thought it was just well written, like, and not that everyone else doesn't write it, but like the way it was written, I was like, wow, this is really good. This is gonna be like a really good series. It didn't feel like a newspaper article, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It definitely. felt more like, like, uh, like a featured piece. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, she which, did a great uh, which job. Which is pretty cool. I'm excited to see that progress throughout the season, and you know, there's something, you know, I'm trying to think, and I kind, I went back and forth with you and the other guys. I'm like, I have someone that can does a good job, but. And the feature articles are great. I like those, but we need yeah. something different. We need something to kind of, you know, I, I want a storyline throughout the the year of something. And, you know, it'll be interesting, you know, not if this goes well, obviously, hopefully she stays in the indie area and stuff and, you know, do another kind of season long piece on a wrestler, or, you know, a group of wrestlers um, so that, you know, follow them around. Fi- you know, there's, there's like I was telling Nick, I mean, there's drama. There's always there's wrestle offs. There's an injury here or there. There's a, you know, this or that. Hopefully, I mean, I'm not open that there's drama and kids get kicked off teams and stuff like that, but you know, there's always something going on, you know, it's well, inevitable though. Yeah. 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 It is. You know, they're well, going to be going to Iron Man. They're going to be going to, you know, Iron Man part two at crown point, you know, there's going to be, you know, Jake Hockaday goes one and two at, uh, at Iron Man. What's his, what, you know, what's he going to do to write the ship, you know, things like that, you know, you know, there's going to be things like that that go on in that room, you know, oh. in that, you know, with those kids and stuff that hopefully we can get some good, you know, good content. You know, it's good to hear, you know, as a coach, I know what goes on in the wrestling room. I know, you know, we, Nick and I talk a lot and we know stuff. Kids get hurt. Kids, you know, 
do dumb things and you know we know all that stuff that goes on uh behind the scenes that doesn't get put out there and it's like you know it'd be kind of cool to have some of that good you know some of that you know some of the behind the scenes stuff go you know out there yeah i think i think um you know obviously derek's always one of those guys too that's always been very open to uh, promoting and growing the sport i think that's just another avenue to do it which is really cool yeah definitely and yeah when i, when I proposed it to him and I could barely get out the idea. And he's like, yes, that's we're, we'll do it. There's no problem with that. So it was really neat. I, I thought, and as we said it earlier, you know, our superintendents like fully on board. He's like, I want to win. You know, that that's, you know, he does, doesn't want to, you know, ma- balance the budget and make sure, you know, this and that within the school, he, he wants to have good athletics and that's, uh, they brought in, I mean, their football coach is a guy that's been around for a while and had a lot of success at, I think their football coach was in Florida coaching like a prep team or something for a few do, years. Do you feel like it? Obviously you guys are different area than we are. Do you, do you feel like uh, there's a lot of teams that like really want to win? Or do you think there's like a lot of teams that want to keep like the status quo? <laughs> do you mean like, I'm not saying like say names. I'm like, Hey, you know, like, yeah. Do you mean like yeah. in our area that we're currently in, like or do you mean statewide? In general, it's statewide. I think that like, like we're, we all compete, and we know like you get better by like just grinding and working, right? Like that's how everyone's gonna improve. And I just like kind of sometimes I look around, I'm like, I don't know if all these guys are like, like, are you more like, hey, I want to be the status quo, or do you want? You think there's a lot of people out there that are really like, hey, I want to be the best. I'll never, I'll never say anything down about somebody else, but. I'll say something positive here, like what I think Brownsburg's doing and what Crown Point's doing. Um, and we're not doing it at that scale yet because we're not there. But, you know, we've won regionals a couple times. We don't want to yeah. be done just winning regionals. We want to win semi-state. And then if that becomes something, we'd want to place in the top five at state. And I think yeah. with Brownsburg and Crown Point, these are teams that have won the IHSA state. Now they're looking to do something nationally. And that's clear by what they've done with their schedule. Um, Crown Point had a little movie out last year that I watched. Uh, somebody made it. It was really good. I think the kid from Andrean made it, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Hey, we we yeah. talked about doing some stuff with them with Indiana Matt too. Yeah. So, so now we got cool. this going on with Brownsburg, and they're building a brand. They're you know not just we're not just Indiana known. We're nationally known, and I think they're trying to get to that level of being. Hey, we're St. Paris Grand back in the day, you know, yeah. or St. Ed's back in the day, and so I would say like Brownsburg and Crown Point probably aren't just happy being the best in Indiana. I don't think they're okay with the status quo. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's exactly. I mean, in, in, in the thing, like like you said, like, do they want to win? Everyone wants to win, but it, it's the and, and you see it in any sport. How what will you do to to win? How how much will you the process? Go, yeah. I mean, how much will you go beyond that? What what kind of work are you going to do in the off season? What kind of thing? You know, talk about this area. I think people want to win, but I don't think there are enough teams that want to put in the, the full time. They want to put in part time. You know, it's like one of those things. You can tell that, you know, like, like we, we, we've talked about you and me and Nick, how are you, you know, go to ISWA state, go to the, the, the McConnell quad duels in the summer, go to this, you know, go to those events and what coach, what teams and coaches do you see there? It's, it's, there, there's no secret that it's those teams that are putting in the time and those teams that are, are doing well. I'll specifically say on our area, um, with the two new facilities that are around in particular that showed up with warrior and the fort. Um, we were at the fort last night and I can tell you the fifth to eighth grade group right now, they're pretty dang good. And I don't think that's going anywhere. Cause I pay attention more to the fifth to eighth cause of where <laughs> my kids at. <laughs> and obviously I see the younger kids down there too. And I see them working and doing stuff, but I, I believe that with warrior, the fort, um, more real outlets for kids to do what everybody else has been doing in the state. I, I promise there's going to be a difference in a few years, but we need more than just that. Oh yeah. I, did you hear great things? Like everyone, you see those guys getting better and you see them having success and they're like, yeah, these have been great facilities. And, and obviously like we, we've benefited from that. Like the uh, indie area has benefited from that from years. So it's good that that's happening for you guys. Yeah, definitely. It was like no right or wrong answer. I just, I, there was just something like uh, we were talking about. Um, it was actually a softball question. Someone was asking me about high school softball. And they were asking, um, do you feel like all the teams in the area are trying to win state? Or do you think that there's a lot of teams that are just okay competing? And I said, yeah. Like, I mean, I guess there's like softball, like one of the best 
players in the entire country, probably the number one player in the country, is at Ron Cali. And they're going to win state as long as she's there. She throws basically 100. And, I mean, I, was, I thought I was pretty good at baseball, but I didn't see anyone throwing 100 when I was 15. Um, I had never seen anyone throwing 100. So if anyone was wondering, never, zero times. Um, but, like, I think that's, like, a question. I was like, yeah, maybe, like, like what's – like I guess, what's the de- like? What like what are people looking to accomplish? Are you looking to be the best, and your your goal is to win state every single year, or is your you know goal to just go out and you know compete at a high level, and hopefully it happens. And I think like you guys were saying, like Crown Point and Brownsburg. I know those guys are like looking like they. I'm sure the next article for Brownsburg is gonna be really exciting with some of the Crown Point stuff that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Now. They- could that happen to them too? Yeah, like I think that happened to them two years ago, mm-hmm. where I thought they were the best team and they had some guys kind of fade. I think um, I think they had three or four guys out of their lineup, and eh, no, maybe yeah, maybe three or four, where you know it was the flip, and I don't remember who ended up winning it that year, but um, but they were had a stacked squad and they lost, you know, a two twenty, a, a six, uh, you know, and it's just like man, that's really tough. But I think those are guys that are like. Hey, like their goal, not now that what Nick said, like to be nationally uh, accomplished is huge, but those guys expect to win state. Like they don't, it's not like, ah, you know, let's, let's compete. They, they want to go, they think that they're going to win. I would be willing to bet if the crown point coaches came on right now, they'd still say, yeah, we're going to win. I, I seen that she just committed to Illinois. That's, that's awesome, man. We were talking about that softball player from Hobart that's wrestling. So she's a D1 level com- uh, recruit. She recruited, she committed this week to Illinois. Nice. That's, awesome. that, that's, I mean, yeah, that's awesome. Especially keeping her out, you know, try, starting wrestling as a senior. Hey, let's go wrestle. And bro, uh, she's, she must like she's to a rage. Freak athlete and she's incredibly strong. <laughs> I'm sure like when she grabs girls up there, but like she works so hard. Good for her. Yeah. Hopefully she stays away from stall, stalling Zach Johansson. I heard he, <laughs> that's all. I think I heard that's all he teaches in that room from, from what we gathered earlier. You missed that. Uh, no, he, he runs legs. Oh, so he, he said. So he said a there's a. He said there's a difference. If you run legs, it's not stalling. Oh, I'm keeping track on oh, that. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, she's a junior. Oh, nice. So you got two years out of her, possibly. So, um, yeah. And I, speaking of girls wrestling, I was talking to, uh, going back and forth with uh, Razzo the other day, and he's like looking at results and stuff. He's like, he's a lot more connected than we are. You know, I'm seeing that there's. A lot more events, and it looks like the events have the same number of kids, girls, that they've had when they just had one event. So he, he's like, I think the gr- number of girls have doubled this this year. So um, that's pretty good to see. And I know the rankings, his I've been adding quite a few girls because <laughs> people are beating everybody. So um, so it's it's looking like, and he, you know, a couple years ago when we first started doing them, there are some weights that you can barely get six girls ranked now. He has probably 10 to 15 in most weight classes, which is pretty good. Yeah. So, yeah, we lost one of our girls on uh, Saturday to the Rochester tournament. So we, 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 she didn't get to go play in the showcase in uh, Rosemont. And then, uh, <clears throat> like she's competing at, uh, Rensselaer. So, which is really cool. Yeah. That's, that's good. I know she wrestled as like a kid and, and then I think gave it up for a little bit. And now she's back. Now that's, uh, just, you know, I think that she was more worried about, as you advance wrestling the guys and that you can wrestle the straight girls, I think she's pretty excited to be back. That's awesome. Yeah, so should be interesting. She came Sunday with a, with a fat eye and a fat lip. I said, it's a good look, man. Good luck. <laughs> I, I know you competed yesterday. You weren't lying. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm glad to see that. And, you know, it's going to be sanctioned, you know, I would say within two years. That That's my guess. If not, you know, I, I don't know. I assume the IHSA is not going to – wait for boys uh volleyball to sanction them at the same time but um it's it's interesting to see how this process plays out and you know the sooner it's it's sanctioned i think the better it is for girls so yeah i agree let's see what else anything else you want to we talked about pretty much everything on our list um the, the caramel versus pen duel which that was very interesting um the the uh exhibition but they played dodgeball so did they play dodgeball? Yeah. Yeah. They played dodgeball and I guess uh, Carmel is not good at dodging the ball. They can't dodge wrenches either. Dude, Penn was, Penn was like 
running this thing for all year. They were they're training for a full year. Give Ed time. <laughs> give Ed time. <laughs> Ed just had, Ed just told me he had like his knee replaced. You gotta give him some time, man. Let let the let those guys get in there, work it out. Yeah. So yeah, that that was pretty interesting. Um, Wallace C. Belmont. Any uh, any uh, thing you saw last week that jumped out at you, or anything you're looking forward to this week? Uh, some of the early results were really good. I'm looking forward to Thanksgiving. You guys, yeah. are you guys traveling? No, we're staying home. So good, good call, man. Yeah. Having a small little family uh, dinner and relaxing, sleeping in. Working, I gotta get some things up on the walls here. I got some stuff, you know. We we got the studio, anyway. Heck, in a weekend, got it cleaned out and got you know the couch in here. Got a desk, got a computer up here, got a TV. Yeah. <laughs> got it. Got Did you have so much more time when you have Saturdays off? Yeah, yes, for for some odd reason, yes. <laughs> when I have Saturdays off and I don't have to, you know, wake up at three o'clock in the morning to head to who knows where. So, yeah. So we'll be. Uh, you know, I got, I'm going to get some things on the walls here. Got, you know, got the Pittsburgh classic singlets that I have autographed and some other memorabilia. So we'll be, you know, gradually getting it, but we got basics are done. And so now it's time to, you know, add to everything. So it looked like, um, like central looked good at the, the Roland Beckham <clears throat> fall bra Calumet. I seen Carlos Perez was in the lineup. Uh, I looked on their online roster. I didn't see him initially, but I guess, you know, good for him. You know, he was at Mount Carmel. I think, I believe he was a freshman, sophomore champ or middle school champ in Indiana. And then was like the freshman, sophomore champ in Illinois. Yeah. We seen him when we did the Mount Carmel duel. Um, so that's a good pickup for Lake Central. Yeah, I seen Aiden cool. Campbell's at uh, Chester. I, I thought he was a holdback, but um, so he'll probably be in the next update. Sometimes you gotta like post the stuff, and then you get all the all the information, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the uh, that's the key. What, they're gonna tell you it's wrong. If, if if it's wrong, you're gonna you're gonna hear about it, and that's why. Oh, well, I mean, I helped. Uh, you know, Caleb was getting the Sport Wayne semi state rankings out, and I was like, hey, uh, Jalen May was at you know 120 this week, and let's put him up at 120, and I just put him at number one because he was higher placer, and Tishner has beaten him like six dozen times it seems so everyone's like oh you should have him over there i go uh, you know what i did that because he was there and i threw him out there because he was the highest placer i didn't even look past that so yeah <laughs> i got i they got that one with hutchinson and uh like um who was it, it was <laughs> leech he, he was right guy, yeah. <laughs> i said man he had a really good summer against him he's tough <laughs> yeah. oh yeah. hutchinson leech. had the one win um pretzel had a pretzel, good yeah. summer Against Leach. Yeah, no, it's potential, yeah. Yep. He said, I beat him six times. I, dude, he had an awesome iPod. Yeah. It, it was just one of those things I was, you know, sometimes when you have to do that, like, you're constantly, so, like, you put, like, you get rosters. So, like, when, when someone sends me their entire lineup, I'll go and just say, hey, I'm going to sort it by teams, line it all up, hit it back by placers, hit it by numbers, and then sometimes it just comes up like that and you just forget. <laughs> so, it's easy to fix. It's just a, you know, drag and drop. Yep. Uh, what's crazy and i'm calling people out here i'm not gonna say any names but <laughs> we get all these all these results posted and there's no results so and it's just crazy to me like i you can see my results <clears throat> whenever i post them i post everything i'll post who it is who wrestled what weight it's like if, if we're gonna duel a team on a saturday or, or team state or whatever they're gonna weigh in i'm gonna see where everybody weighed in if I'm wanting to finagle my lineup, I can do that because I know who kids are and I got an idea. Then you have to hope you get the draw, evens or odds. Like, why are we just not putting our results? I mean, I feel like when I was in school, they were putting the newspaper after every duel we had. Yeah. Now, I, I wish people just put who they were because it's interesting too. Like, I like that as a fan. I look at schools I don't even wrestle just because it's cool. Yeah. I Yeah, that's a uh, – the people that complain about, you know, not having promotion and stuff, but they won't go out and do that kind of stuff. That it, it, it's one of the, uh, my, my goals is to even, heck, even people won't even put even their regular s scores in. They, they refuse to put even a dual score, even, you know, not that a 42 to 33 win can tell us, can tell you much, but at the same time, it's better than nothing. But I, I don't understand why people don't want to put their results in. It's a, you know what, if you're good enough, you're going to win. You know what? And people try to hide like, you know, 
I always, I always laugh when people, you know, try to hide things and I know enough people that I can get video on anybody. You know, I can, I, I have one, I have, I, I have like three connections. I can get a video on pretty much anyone in the semi state or state, you know, and, and there's a, I know enough people have wrestled those types of people and I always got video when I need it. If I want a video, I got it. You know, there's enough people that you can email and contact. Uh, it's a small world. You can get on Twitter. You can get on Facebook. Hey, hey Nick, do you have that video? Yeah, cool. You can have Flow Wrestling and look. Yeah, like yeah, you up. can have Flow Wrestling, Nick. Can, yeah, now, yeah. That, and now you don't even need to do it. Last year, Semi State was on, you know, on, yeah. on track. So hey, I mean, I just need my Flow account. So yeah, so I mean, even Brett <laughs> Smith knows how to do video. So that that that's oh. even. <laughs> I, I always find that weird. That's always like one of those weird things. Yeah. No, I, like why? Why wouldn't you want like your kid? Like we and give or take. Maybe some people don't want to wrestle in college, but I know that uh, like we've had multiple coaches talk about profiles and see the results and say, "Man, like we saw this kid on Indiana mat. We followed him. You can go by the views and look at. It. I mean, it." It's just crazy. I mean, there's still people that are like, yeah, you know, uh, oh. you know, we're just trying to keep it under the radar. And it's like, okay. <laughs> Jeff Perrin's Facebook Check those page. Parents yes. Facebook page. I cannot, I will not, I will not claim that I have done that before. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it, it's just one of those things that I think coaches, we, we, we have some people still stuck back, you know, even social media, Facebook, Twitter and stuff, whether you like it or not it's a promotional tool for your program and some people refuse to do it. They don't think it's important and kids like to be recognized for their work, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> whether, you know, no matter where it is, you know, whether, whether they got six out of seven at a JV tournament or they won semi state, they like to be recognized for their, for their work. And that's, you know, it, it's amazing that the teams that are even what I would call satisfactory at, you know, at, social media you know they're getting more kids out for their they're keeping their kids out because they everyone likes to be recognized for their work they, there's no there's no question you you know you like being praised at work you like be you know yeah. we all, you know your boss comes up and says, hey good job today that makes you feel good you know obviously they're not posting that on facebook and stuff uh, joe did a good job today at work yeah he, he did some code <laughs> but you know things like that being praised in kids you know and they you know, parents like to see that they, they like to brag about their kids who doesn't stuff like that. So I'm, I don't know. It, it's a thing. I, I see some people that don't do stuff like that. And I think it's, I think it's detriment to programs, it's detriment to your kids that, you know, they, they want recognized for their work and send out a tweet, say, Hey, congratulations. You know, whether it's a JV kid or a varsity kid or whoever, you know, you know, I, was Noblesville, they have the, a belt that I saw a, Coach Weimer had, yeah. you know, you're given a belt wrestler of the week. That's cool. Those kids are going to like that. They're going to eat that up. So I don't know. It's just, that, that's a soapbox. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I got that started. No, you're fine. You're fine. I, it's, a, it's a, I mean, it is a, it is one of those things. I mean, even Brett Smith can do Twitter. You know, if Brett, if, <laughs> if Brett Smith can do Twitter, anyone can do Twitter and it's, you know, and like just the fan part of me and like yeah. growing our sport, which is why I'm sure you guys have done Indiana Matt. Yeah. All right. I, I enjoy when Brett tweets. I enjoy when my friends that are coaches tweet and I get to see, hey, so-and-so got their 100th win or so-and-so yep. got record takedowns this year. Like, that stuff's cool to see, mm -hmm. you know, because I am a fan also. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's good. I mean, kids like to be recognized for all their works and stuff, and I, I don't know. That's just a soapbox. I, you know, coaches are stuck in, you know, and you can get an assistant. You can get a kid. To, someone, someone can tweet out a little bit. Poppy yeah. will do it wrong a couple times before he gets it right, but he'll do it. <laughs> What's those fat fingers? Hey, uh, <laughs> and, it, and it wasn't on that rankings post this time, but like there's other times where you'll get like, well, I beat, I beat Joe six times. And I don't want to say that because that's too close to what happened on that. And I don't, I don't want it to be that because it's not that. Yeah. But like, they're like, well, I beat him, the number eight ranked kid. I was like, but you lost to these other six kids. And we're like an ongoing text right now of like, <laughs> well, what can I be number, you know, five when I beat the number five kid? I was like, I mean, like, and I'm not, dude, like, I'm not to like shame anybody. Like, dude, you had 15 losses. That means there's 14 other people that I had to find 
who they lost to and put them ahead of you. If, but that you had that one win, right? Yes. So they, we get those a lot too. They'll, they'll tell you all the wins. And I'm like, hey, what about this? I'm like, yeah, so like I was sick that day. And, <laughs> um, and it happens, man. Hey, like don't get me wrong. It's, we live in a world where people are, you know, there's like a, like a cough going around right now. We're losing players at an all-time high. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a, yeah, th- those are, those are the fun ones where like, uh, yeah, yeah, well, I, I beat that guy, you go, but didn't you lose the him and him? Oh, and they, they, they conveniently forget those losses. Referee called locked hands and I didn't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, Twitter is better than Snapchat. Yes. That's a, uh, yes, very much so. What's the hex all? <laughs> He says some weird stuff, man. Yeah, yes, Cook is. Uh, <laughs> he, when you when you're raging, you just say, you know, you're you're. I can't find my hex. <laughs> Two by four. An actual hacksaw? <laughs> I don't know. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. I don't oh. know. <laughs> so. Um, anything else? Uh, I guess we're. I mean, we've been going for a couple hours now. We got a two-hour-long episode. So. Yeah, I was out coaching softball. I missed half of it. Yeah, y'all. Th- I mean, y'all did you just talk now. about the Yanni D and Gomez match? And yeah, I heard, yeah, yeah, I heard Yanni lost. I we we were watching a little bit of the uh, nine three, right? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. And then and then the Gomez just uh, beat uh, Sammy Sasso too. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Hey, Kirkfleet beat Cassiope. We watched that one. Um, Aaron Brooks beat Keckheisen twelve eight. Wow. Alirez over Cole Matthews. That's a good win for him. Uh, Lara Boyd wrestled for. Uh, she wrestled. She she uh, got beat. Unfortunately, David Carr over Quincy Monday, Keegan O'Toole over Hamity. How bad did Carr beat Muncie or uh, Monday, Quincy Monday? Uh, 8-4. Okay. And then oh, Gomez beat Sasso 7-1 and Strachi beat uh, Lewis 2-0. Oh, Gomez. Just right, yeah, I'm, wa- I'm, yeah. I'm watching this like Gomez uh, come back on Sasso. Would you, it says, ten, uh, yeah, I think it was 10-9. to nine. He got three takedowns in the final 25 seconds. Oh, wow. That uh, uh, he's wrestling well right now. That's a cool story yeah. though, right? Because he was at Iowa State and then got like he was out for concussions, right? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, that was wrong. Uh, he's Bashamania. You're fired. <laughs> D- yeah, DJ had a real good weekend. Yeah. Yeah. They. Uh, yeah. DJ Washington won. Yeah. IU beat uh, Princeton on Friday night, yeah. and then they went to the Army. Uh, Black Knight Invitational. Black Knight Invitational, Black Invitational and they, uh, IU was second there. They tied with Army there. I want to say Penn State won it. I know they were like, tied for second. I yeah. know DJ won. They had a bunch of third and fourth place finishers yes. for IU. So, yeah, that's uh, kind of, you know, IU hopefully keeps continuing. They got a young team, young, hungry team. So it'll be interesting to see how those guys do. Um, so definitely looking forward to seeing that kind of stuff. Um, IU, Purdue, I think they want – three you know at their duels two or three you know i can't remember um so they're doing pretty good um i know uh i think we're gonna do i was talking about articles i was just texting with blaze lowry he's gonna do kind of a recap some you know interesting results from the past couple weeks um hunter reed won the finley open yeah and i gotta got give a shout out to our guy hunter reed columbia city guy nice. wrestling for finley so um, i've seen uh riley bettish won the lindawood open yeah and uh, so, Joe Walker has been well. for IU or for Michigan. Jeez, messed, almost messed that one up. Uh, so he yeah, start for IU too. Yeah, so um, <laughs> so yeah, a lot of a lot of good guys. Uh, you know, a lot of Indiana guys to to watch on Big Ten Network or Flow or wherever the uh, wrestling is now. It's hard to find sometimes, but pretty cool to see the college scene uh, heating up and keeping everyone busy. Um, oh yeah. Hopefully, we get to see Brayton wrestle soon. <laughs> he wrestled this weekend, right? I don't think he wrestled this weekend. I thought uh, I thought that his mom posted that he got out there and got a win. <laughs> did he? Maybe he did. I don't know. I thought he, he had that awesome that. highlight video where they uh, yeah they made it seem like uh, Gable was coming back. Yeah, yes, that was yeah, that was wrestled. classic. <clears throat> the, the, the actually the better part was uh, if you watch the outtakes of it because that if if you know Brayton that. You know, him doing that is probably kind of way out of his league. He's pretty quiet, pretty just low key, and doing something like that is. So I, I can't imagine how many takes it took for that. So, how do you have a pen inner squad after your first match? Jeez. 
Yeah. <laughs> they do it different, man. Inner squad dodgeball game. Yeah. They don't lose in dodgeball. We talked about this they, in semi They're going to be, be throwing wrenches at each other. Is that how, is that how uh, Harper has them training now? <laughs> I can see Harper being Pastor's old hula hand. <laughs> We'll start calling. We're gonna start calling uh, Harper patches for scrimmage. <laughs> Brayley got a major against Bingham, Binghamton. Yeah, so so um, he's back. Who's back? Brayton. Great. Okay. Said so he got a That's major good. against Binghamton. Oh, nice. Good to see that. Oh, okay. They had a duel. I think it was two weeks ago. They wrestled at the like the North Dakota State or something that he didn't wrestle at, but. Yeah, it's good to see he's back. So, um, fourteen five major. So, anything else we want to go over? Rank rankings probably Monday ish, Monday or Tuesday next week, I assume. <laughs> after we get yeah, I mean, I'm gonna awesome. have a long weekend. I don't do much Black Friday shopping. <laughs> uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, I gave up driving over Thanksgiving, so <laughs> not gonna do that anymore. Hope, uh, yeah, we don't want any more texts like that from last year. So. No, but at least, the, the, I mean, I wasn't like, hey, I was in this like terrible accident. I was like, hey, I'm not going to do the show on Monday. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think I was supposed to do like uh, wrestling weekly too. I, I think I texted Dane. I was like, hey, I'm not going to be able to do that on Sunday night. He's like, oh, okay. I was like, yeah. And I don't even think I told him. I was just like, hey, I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was, uh, that was not fun. Uh, that was no. kind of scary. So, um, but yeah, we, uh. I'm not doing any Black Friday shopping. I definitely am not going to fight it. You're gonna go, oh, you're going to probably go to Goshen. We're going to Goshen, yep. Going to, going to Goshen. Yeah. I saw something on, the other day on Goshen's uh, Twitter that was like, on this day in 1993, Coach Picard wrestled, or coached his first match. So he's been coaching for a couple of years. This is the team that Goshen's, right? Also, right? Like, who's all there? Um, Chesterton's there this year. Uh, Nick, we brought that up. And that's here. what I saw, and I was curious if that was their A team or B team. I wasn't sure, but I don't, I don't know if they have enough for a B team. That's what I know. <laughs> yeah. Um. I just and I edited it. Okay. Edited it. Pretty sure we. I might have said we wrestled on our last match. It's our B team, but we'll have a couple yeah. of kids on it being varsity. Yeah. Belmont Chesterton will be there. Um, half the NECC. Um, Angola. The Angola has some pretty solid guys. I, yeah, they do. And, that's one thing we didn't talk about is that that Goshen regional is going to be interesting. I know as I'm doing the preview, I'm like, okay, who's the best team coming back? And Gola has a, a few good guys. Prairie Heights, you always got to watch out for. Um, DeKalb. DeKalb has a pretty solid team. Uh, there's just so many teams in that sectional and regional, that, that regional that I'm like, Ugh, who do I put in here? I felt like, you know, like, uh, Angola has, um, Elkhart has some pretty solid guys. They got state placer and a couple other pretty good guys. Um, it's going to be an interesting gym town. If uh, Christian wrestles um, should be interesting. Lakeland Lakeland's going to have three or <laughs> yeah, four. Lakeland dudes has some solid real, guys. Real tough. Uh, you know, they, they've, those guys have overcome some shoddy coaching. Um, yeah. Rebone. Yeah. Re Rebone and kidding. Watkins. I'm kidding, uh, Jake. <laughs> I, I don't even know if they can, do they, have they ever wrestled before Rebone and Watkins? I don't know. I, it, I don't know. Michigan's not – they don't consider it wrestling in Michigan, right? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, it should be interesting to see, uh, you know, at that regional. That regional is going to be pretty interesting to watch um, as a fan. As You know, I felt when I did the magazine, I'm, like, trying to figure out – usually their you know, levels and stuff, and I'm, like, trying to figure out who uh, – like, who's the better team? You know, I'm like, oh, look, Prairie Heights. Oh, wait, they lose a few guys. Oh, like this team loses, you know. So but. <laughs> Watkins is getting upset, so he's going to probably be texting me. So, um, <laughs> is that a tough week? I mean, we never, I don't think we ever wrestled that weekend. I think we usually open up the weekend after. I think we wrestled that week, but that's a tough, tough weekend to wrestle, right? Oh, yes, definitely. You guys I, cutting weight. Yeah. They, uh, when I was in high school, we wrestled four NECC matches. We wrestled, I mean, Pretty much it. NECC was almost pretty much decided. There's us who we weren't very good at that time. Angola had some was solid. Prairie Heights, obviously, they're pretty good. Fairfield and then Cherubusco. That was a pretty good five way or four bundle. 
four way uh, stuff going on. You know, right, and that was the week. That was right after Thanksgiving. Everyone's first time making weight. That was horrible. And ACC got smart and won the week later. Now <laughs> to decide their championship. Nick, were you guys at? Were you there? Uh, did you guys go to Valpo Super Duel back in the day? I remember Valpo had that huge like ten Super Duel. Like ten team super duel. I don't know if you guys were there. Oh no, um what I remember after Thanksgiving was my freshman year actually going to Michigan City back in the day. Oh yeah, they they had like a super duel too, right? Maryville's there. No, that's the port. I wasn't very port. good and I was a freshman just kinda getting beat on, so I just remember <laughs> having to make weight for something where I went and got whooped at. <laughs> I'm sure Jason can kinda give a little bit more insight. I remember that Valpo Super Duel used to be really tough. I believe it was the same weekend as like Thanksgiving. It was like a ten team. I remember like one year, like Mike Escobedo and William Campbell wrestled there. Uh, it was like just a bunch of like tough squads. I remember thinking like Watkins, we should get in this. And he's like, nah, <laughs> not, not that weekend. <laughs> How about like after cutting all that weight, did you guys have a better appreciation for Thanksgiving holiday? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Same. I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. I'm so excited now for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Some of my kids probably aren't though. So yeah. About what half your team is. Yeah. <laughs> Are you guys staying the night up there on Friday or are you guys? Uh, no, nope. We're going to drive. Yeah. Um, right at that time. Uh, you probably can't even find a hotel close enough. Well, we might be switching some coaches who were going, so that was part of it. And we're like, you know, they started – we have to leave at 7.15 on Friday. That's not terrible. No. Oh, and no, not, not at all. 6.15 on Saturday, so yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. So, yeah it's, you get 10 good matches and yep. you get to – Russell and yeah, so be interesting. Um, anything else we want to talk about before we head out of here? The, first the war on the Wabash this weekend, they still do that. What, what do you say? The war on the Wabash is that still this weekend? No, that got uh, COVID hit that pretty hard, and they never have they haven't come back. The war has been the war is over, the war has ended. <laughs> I'll tell you that, Rafa Super, let's get that back. Hubbard, let's. Let's get Hobart to get that. Okay. Ten matches, Friday, Saturday, 24 teams, pulls a 12 across bracket for round of 10. It was tough. The Jason Cook Classic. Rage. That's the, I think that's Rage the John Rumble. Cook Classic. That, I think his dad was running that thing. I think yeah. we would, we'd go out and watch. It was just uh, – I mean, obviously, you have early practice and you're out. But, man, I think it was nasty. Yeah. I want to get 24 teams together if one of the first weekends of the year. Jeez. Probably all pretty tough teams over there too. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was. I think it was teams from all. I mean, like obviously Warren Central was coming up. I remember they were there one year. They're pretty good. Yeah, I think uh, Walmart went like there some... for a little bit. I remember Dane talking about that. Um, getting you know ten matches in Valpo. I think Belmont went there. Um, need to get hit. yeah. <laughs> Man know. West. Yeah, I'm sure there was like some state level. So state championship level matches happen in there, like first, first like real weekend of the season. Yeah, now that'd be that'd be a lot. Of, I mean, you gotta have obviously Valpo big enough for twelve mats, I assume. Oh, they got a big field house, I'm sure. Nice. I don't know twelve mats, but they probably get eight, maybe. I don't know. Be, I got two gyms. They got the the side gym. That'd be yeah. That 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 sounds like a fun time. <laughs> That'd be that'd be like the the war on the what's the uh, what's the main street in in Valpo, Main Street, war, Main Street war on Main Street. Main street. <laughs> no, what is it? it's like Lincoln Way? I think Lincoln Way is the main street over there. War on Thirty. I mean, I, I was over no, in the area. I, I was over. I mean, that's that's. I was over in the region this weekend. I was over, you know, in Hobart. Drove through Hobart trying to find the brick road. Couldn't find it. Asked my asked the my GPS. Couldn't find the you know. Couldn't find. Did you stop at Lincoln's? <laughs> we're getting a whole. Hey, we're getting a whole rundown of Alpo right now. <laughs> um, did you stop and get some Lincoln's uh, carry out or what? No, we. Were you like an actual Hobart, or are you like Maryville's kind of Hobart by the yeah, mall? Maryville, you know, on thirty, yes. Yeah, so Maryville slash oh, that's, Hobart. That's man. I don't know how they got that annexed <laughs> from Maryville. That's like some inner workings. You got to go like downtown Hobart. Get like. Yeah, let Jason take you around town. Let your hands to show you the ropes. <laughs> Gotta go yeah. tease pizza, man. I, I, I don't know if I can, I can keep up with him after uh, State last year. <laughs> 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 I 
I don't know if I can keep up with him. Ricochet. Oh, yeah. Nice. We did clean out a hot dog stand. Forgot about that. Yes, yes, they can. So, okay. Anyway, we're going to get off here. We'll, we'll be back probably next Tuesday. Maybe Nick will join us. I don't know. Oh, you guys have a duel Wednesday, right? No. Yeah, we got a Wednesday night duel. <laughs> uh, so, no, I don't know. We'll have more guests. M maybe I'll let uh, Watkins come after I after we're being mean to him. He can tell us what wrestling is like in Michigan and stuff. So, uh, with their seventeen classes and all that kind of stuff. So, how many Whiteland football players? I didn't even think about that. Some of the teams that are going, I mean, some of the teams that are that are still playing for football state championships are not very good in like wrestling, which is you know great for those guys. But um, like Whiteland, I think has a good amount of wrestlers on their team. Yeah, uh, I was looking at the rosters for some of the teams. Uh, Center Grove, I saw Caden McConnell and Nate Johnson starts on their start on their defense. I saw a couple other names. New Prairie's probably got forty kids that play football that are on their wrestling team. Yeah, they get ridiculous uh, numbers out. Yeah, yeah, they they they're having a good go, man. Yeah, so um, yeah, the smaller schools, you know, didn't have as many, but should be interesting to see how they, uh, you know how those teams that are in the state finals, obviously Whiteland's supposed to have, should have a pretty good team this year. And now they, you know, they're not, uh, they're, they're going to be getting a late start. And I know Dwanger, I've talked to their coach before we'd see them early in the season and they'd have a little bit of that football hangover of the kids are like, yeah, I really don't want, you know, we want to stay. I don't want to, you know, that's a long season, especially when you go to state, you're adding three, four, five, six games of your season. You're almost doubling your season. Yeah. And they're, they want to break, and then you're going right. You either get kids that are gung-ho, let's go wrestle, or kids that are like, eh, you know, it, that's hard. It's hard to go that long, and, you know, you want to break. You want to see sunlight for once in a while. So it'll be interesting Um, see who, uh, who uh, shows up. And some of those teams, hopefully they don't lose very many kids, if any. And, you know, that's a long, long season, and hopefully they all win state titles. Should be some should good ga some good games Friday and Saturday. So anyway, we're gonna get out of here, I think, and we'll talk at you guys next Tuesday. And thanks, Nick, for showing up, hey, coming to me. coming to Victory Bay and being the first guest in the studio. So we will see you guys next Tuesday.